Hi. Hi. Thank you for watching. First of all, congratulations to you both, to your whole team. I'll give everyone a moment to think of their own questions and start by asking some of my own. Uh, first for you, Mateusz, uh, in the introduction, Jan mentioned that this is based on a true story. Can you tell us exactly where the idea for the screenplay came to be? Yeah, it's quite complicated, but I'll start. I'll try to make the long story short. So in my third grade of high school, I've stumbled, I've stumbled upon a story of a priest impersonator and was just like a tabloid newspaper, you know, just two sentences, nothing really deep. But I started researching this story and also other stories of priest impersonators in Poland because it is a thing for some reason. <laughs> it happens like every few months, actually. There's like a new case described in newspapers. And I think it's like a very weird social phenomenon that calls for like a study <laughs> why why is it there and why is it so 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 common so uh, I from the very beginning before starting this whole thorough research I had this obsession that one day this should become a film because it's like a great premise for for a film about Poland but also like a very universal story about religion raising all those questions you know social role versus true self, religion as right, uh, right as a spectacle or right as something real in which some something happens for real. So it, I wrote a nonfiction novel to sort of dig into those stories and I've concentrated on one of, one of them that I found the most interesting and ambivalent. But from the very beginning, I knew that one day this should become like a fictional script in which I have full control over the uh, plot. I didn't want to sort of, you know, write like a true story film because none of these stories was uh, complex and multidimensional enough for what I had intended. So, yeah, and to make the long story short, like after publishing this uh, novel, I was approached by a producer and it was already like five years after I've started working on the on on the on the story and also the screenplay. And he asked me if I was interested in selling the rights to to my research and to to my novel. And I've said uh, for for a screenplay. And I've said that well, why don't I give it a shot? So I wrote the the screenplay myself. Uh, for you, Jan. Could you, you spoke in the, you said really beautifully in the beginning that you, it wasn't your intention to offend anyone with the film. Can you speak a little bit specifically about what your motivations to make the film were? Well, f first of all, I didn't know Mateusz at the time. Uh, since I've read his uh, script and I gave them the notes and the, the revised version of the script came uh, back to me, uh, I knew I'm, not only I'm reading uh, a nice script to film but also there is a person behind it who really knows what he's talking about and I really loved admired uh, uh, his thinking and structure and that's why we've already made another film together which will be premiering next year in like in four months so uh, it's uh, yeah, quite hopefully. a prolific bromance <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true so um so I'm very lucky, and I, I consider myself very lucky. After 2018 was big for us, we were constantly get to, to get together. But uh, what you said, um, I think um, first I love documentary films, and uh, me myself, I made two documentaries. Uh, one of which was presented here in Toronto. For, um, Five years, four, four years, four years ago at Toronto Film, uh, at Toronto Univers University, um, I love to read uh, reportages. Uh, Poland is big uh, on it. Um, Mateusz was also uh, studying reportage, right, at uh, the Institute of Reportage. Uh, you were connected with the. Yeah, I've studied like nonfiction writing, but non I didn't really finish the course, so oh. I. <laughs> Nothing to brag about. <laughs> started work, started working. So, um, so when I read the script, what struck me was how well researched it is. Usually, um, um, 
I, if I'm approached by the scriptwriter, usually it's the story which is more genre or more character driven, um, with some sketch of the background. It's not as well researched as uh, this one. This one was like as if I was reading. I didn't know Mateusz uh, also um, uh, had written uh, the original article, uh, the novella. Um, so that was first thing I loved the research of it. Usually I do it myself uh, as a director. I go to places, I meet re real people, especially when I was making Warsaw 44, the movie about Warsaw Uprising. I was met, uh, meeting veterans, uh, talking to them, trying to get to know how it, how it was um, for, for eight years. Um, this time I felt somebody did the work himself. Uh, so that was amazing. And the other, the other thing is... Uh, the um, the absurd of the situation and the complexity complexity of of the main character, which I personally um, this is the thing the, this is the place in cinema if I see any uh, for me to as a director to sort of uh, my father is an actor so I I sort of I think I know how to talk to actors and actresses and and you that's do. my thing sort of I I love I love working on with them. Um, preparing for the role i spend very long time with actors going to places meeting real people so when i finally like i saw in the in the script a, a tremendous potential for my actor director relationship with bartek main character and other actors as well it, coming back to bartek bilenia who plays daniel how did you find him well um because Matos was also involved in the process of casting since he knew the original, maybe not the original Daniel, but... Original or, Daniels. <laughs> original Daniels, that's true. Uh, so, uh, actually first, uh, because Pincher, the other character, his sidekick, is a big name in Poland. He stars in films, he plays, um, his name is uh, Tomek. Tomasz uh, Zientek, he plays and he played probably in three movies in which he was the leading character. So he was our fir first choice. We had to put a name before even starting a casting to apply to uh, the Polish Film Institute. So he was our Daniel. And then we started to finally um, uh, audition for the role and for the part. And Bartek Bielenia came and obviously he's very well known among the, uh, theater goers like his circles um love like um like student circles uh, people uh art people know Bartek because he involves himself in an experimental scene and the like in theater very in intellectual very scene intellectual and stuff. he has like a very intellectual approach with what which was weird in this casting video yeah. that I watched that was like <laughs> the only guy who Basically, he didn't speak about himself, but he spoke about like how post-Catholic uh, psychological issues are the main problem for you know Polish people these days. It was like just like like, like an academic essay rather than regular an, an audition. Uh, audition. <laughs> yeah. I gave uh, every actor. I gave uh, this this time. I, I decided to make it different, and I didn't ga uh, give them. Um, actual scenes, but I asked them to play two um, two situations. One in which one they had to be street a uh, streetwise character who has an um, a direct obvious pretensions to somebody behind the camera for um, betraying uh, him at the police station, mm -hmm. and tell it like just invite you know come up with your own story behind it and just. Um, okay. Yeah, go at it. And the other one was yeah, like try to try to be a young priest and m sort of conduct a sermon. Like your words tell something which will make me go up as a person. So both were great from uh, because I was looking for flip sides, and both were greatly d delivered by Bartek. We'd love some questions from the audience. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Thank <laughs> Big you. Big congratulations. Yes, in the pink. We're honored. Uh, to repeat the question, the, the question is why was it difficult to get this film financed in Poland? Did it have something to do with nationalism, the church, and can you be more specific? Well, obviously, yes, you're right. Uh, I, I feel the rise of the, the things you, you, you've mentioned everywhere in the world now. Uh, we are facing uh, the, this conservative, very conserv conservative band to a point in which people tend to like it polarizes people it divides families people stop talking to each other because of political issues social issues etc so uh, unfortunately church especially in poland became too much involved in politics as well uh, usually uh, church was an arbiter so, so some like trying to be apolitical um, during 50 years of communism, church was the place in which mm, uh, the place to go for artists, intellectuals, because even they, Marxists. This is like the paradox, the paradox. In, in Poland that there was like a very strong Marxist <laughs> movement yes. in the church that was like against communism, which sounds absurd, but like for us, it's it makes sense because it was like the only place where you could gather without the censorship and stuff. So. Yeah. So, but I think that it, in a sense, certain job, but it, it sort of gave the church this extreme, uh, extremely high position f because of this very sort of nice attitude towards the intellectuals and to all the people who felt rejected during the communism. But and the the mistake that was basically done by the church and also by the governments, different governments actually after after the collapse of communism was that that sort of the ch the church capitalized this this trust mm -hmm. in creating and and in trying to have an impact on society which never ends well for the church and for the society yes so it happened here and i think um because um especially because church also i think in my opinion benefited from the appearance of of uh, people of art and and intelligentsia in church, talking to priests and being with priests, being friends with priests. I, me myself, I have like two or three great um, priest friends in Poland, which actually helped us uh, here. Uh, but it ended. It ended. We, we had like three after thirty years of, of mm -hmm. freedom. Uh, a lot of uh, great, um, uh, um, clever priests. Uh, Past, I mean, and the new generation is sort of more keen uh, to be more conservative, like uh, on being more more conservative mm -hmm. in many ways, and uh, actually exclusive. I mean, uh, rejecting other stand standpoints, right? So here it was there was no difference, um, uh, it, 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 it was no exception, and we were obviously we couldn't. For example, shoot in the church, which was in the village and is portrayed in the in, in here in the film, because the, the region we've 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 been uh, we were shooting is the the Bible Belt of Europe, <laughs> sort, of, <laughs> sort of. So it's it's uh, uh, mountains, uh, Polish mountains, is southern, beautiful region. My my father is uh, was born mm -hmm. really close to uh, that place. Uh, it's close to the border with Slovakia. Mm, we, I was looking to, for a place, for a location which would mm, come up as, uh, um, which would underline this this uh, rejection theme mm. in the film. So the the community and the village is also mm. there's this this feeling of rejection by the overall society. So not only the rejected character, main character, uh, shows up at the village but also she, also she tries to help people who feel rejected them themselves but they don't hesitate to reject somebody else like as if it's a, it's a human thing like even if you have two people on on the moon probably they would, they would like it's 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 a phenomenon <laughs> <laughs> like, like i'd like to see that movie like we can't you know that that's <laughs> So so uh, so yeah so um, especially here also uh, the local sort of the regional church clergy didn't help and they didn't allow us to shoot in church and close to the church 
So, uh, so when Daniel is approaching the church, it was with a closed uh, gate. Usually, we were faking it op the, the opening of it. But, but just, just thank you. Just to answer a little more specifically, uh, we were. It was, you know, just like a very common accusation from conservative sort of people and like the conservative people in some institutions as well that this film is blasphemous. It's like it was a blasphemy, which for me was very weird because for, for me as a as an atheist, I would say maybe Catholic atheist <laughs> in a sense, I I felt that and to all of my friends and my family who is atheist as well, they were all like, man, this film is like extremely religious. Do you believe in God? And I was like, no, not really, but I'm like really interested in religion, you know, as a, as a social and psychological phenomenon as something in spirituality in general. So it, this was like, I felt so weird <laughs> because like my friends were like, man, this is very religious. And the church was like, this is a blasphemy, <laughs> you know? Yes, at the back. First, a compliment to specifically the close-ups in the film, and then the question is, how many in the in the, in the cast were professional versus local? Mm, actually, thank you very much. Uh, uh, most of mm, people in the film are professionals, even parents in the background. I wanted them to be professionals because I, even though budget-wise, we were talking about it yesterday, we for forgot about it. In the script, they don't have even any specific lines. Mm -hmm. So budget-wise, if you make it, um, if you step into the production, you don't treat them as actors. And I felt from from day one that they're the expo like they're going to be exposed on screen for for so so such a long time, and there's such a core element to the story that we need to have them as actors i need to have partners so uh, that was kind of a you know back and forth with producers because you know actors versus extras but this is the way i worked i had because uh i had a partner partner such a great part sorry <laughs> great partner in, in okay Matej. with that <laughs> but uh, i didn't have to think about uh, the text while i'm on on set and i could work with background ca uh, characters as well but in terms of juvenile detention center, uh, boys in surrounding are real. I mean, they're from juvenile. We, we were like courtesy of one of the facilities. They allowed boys to come up on, on set and their supervisors also are taking part in the film. Couldn't film in the church, could film in the juvenile detention center. <laughs> Got it, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's very interesting. Uh, really great question. In in your research, did you get to speak to any of the impersonators that that you wrote about and follow up what what happened in some of the cases? What's the punishment, if any? Mm -hmm. So uh, the first the answer to the first question is that uh, we've decided not to engage some of the characters that sort of, sort of inspired the screenplay because I knew them and I knew that for them it could mean for them that they would think that oh this is a film about me this is like a real story it's it, it was kind of like an issue also you know we were from the production that we didn't want to do this uh, once we had the purely fictional <laughs> screenplay yes it's legal issues and so also, it's legal. also legally it could like lead to some, so some we questions. say it's inspired by real yeah. events not based on but uh, and also I've I've had a feeling after two experiences uh, with the nonfiction articles before that they don't necessarily want this attention from t from two guys. They, they didn't like come to a meeting where I wanted to show them the articles before actually publishing them. So I felt that maybe this is not what they really want. And uh, the second thing is that it's it varies mm, with different cases. Recently, there was this guy who 
it came out that he he was a priest impersonator for 20 years and he almost like became like a bishop or somebody and then it <laughs> then it came out so uh th this was quite funny and the but with 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 the case that i've studied most thoroughly i would say it was fascinating because i've spent hours in the courts where there was like a legal case against the guy and uh, there were two cases the legal case and of course the like church court case mm -hmm. and it's fascinating because in in the in the church case he was excommunicated without any like okay. without even consulting the vatican he was just like get out and uh, so he cannot like legally uh, if you <laughs> sort of believe in church law he cannot step into a, a church anymore, anymore. <laughs> and he's like you know anathema esto whatever for ages and the other and but in the in the sort of secular court this case was very complicated because it was very hard to find anybody from from the villages where he where he confessed where he that's his sermons and masses and, and and stuff like that. It was very hard to find anybody who who would want to accuse him for doing it. Who would like want to be like formally become the accuser in this case? Right. There was only one woman, but then because everybody else said that they ah, we were fine, you know, for us it was just he was a cool priest. Just <laughs> let's forget it. So in the end, he he didn't have any any sort of legal. Punishment. But there was some uh, issue with uh, with admitting that the, the, the sacraments he, he conducted. Yes, this was extremely complicated, like theologically. I probably won't dwell on the theological questions that are, I don't even remember the terms. But there's something with sacraments that they can be like valid, but uh, but without uh, dignity. In noble, right? no, yeah, no dignity. noble. I don't know. In nope. noble, how does yeah, th there's yeah. a canonic so, law that says that, that 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 this kind of sacrament can be valid, but in noble, <laughs> which is I don't know what it means, but yeah. so fascinating. Yeah. So yes. I yes. wish that we thank could you. keep speaking to you. I know you'll have more questions outside the cinema, but it's all the time we have. I want to thank you both for being here so much. Thank you very much. Film. Thank you. Very much, guys. Thank you.